Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Amy here. So today we're gonna talk about new releases coming for the month of July. As I'm filming this, it is July 2nd. So I'm a little late, a little behind on my filming because I wanted June to just be mail mail videos. So here we are, July 2nd. Whenever it goes up, happy 4th of July, by the way. Uh, which brings us to our first book, that I have written down on my list that comes out on July 4th. That book is Silence for the Dead by Simone St. Jane. This is one of my most anticipated books that are to be released for the year of 2023, so I'm really looking forward to this one, although it does take place in 1919. I'm not a huge his historical fiction kind of gal, um, but this is mystery thriller. It looks like it may have some paranormal in it, which is basically Simone St. James style. So I'm still anxious to read it and see how I feel about it. So as I said, in 1919, we have Kitty Weeks. Uh, she falsifies her background to obtain a nursing position at Portis House, a remote hospital for soldiers left shell-shocked by the horrors of the Great War. That was rough with my lisp. <laughs> Hiding the shame of their mental and stability in what was once a magnificent private estate the patients suffer from nervous attacks and tormenting dreams but something more is going on at Porta's house its plaster is crumbling its plumbing makes eerie noises and strange breaths of cold waft through the empty rooms it's known that the former occupants left abruptly but where did they go and why do the patients all seem to share the same nightmare one so horrific that they dare not speak of it. And then Kitty finds a, a dangerous ally in a Jack Yates, an inmate who may be a war hero, a madman, or maybe both. I love a little hint of paranormal in my thriller books. I love Simone St. James's writing, so I can't wait to check this one out. It comes out July 4th. On July 6th, we have a male male romance from Riley Hart releasing. This is actually the third book in a series, I don't remember what series because as per usual, I have not started this, this series yet, but I have it marked that I want to read it. Uh, the series is called Inevitable. The first book is Only for the Weekend, uh, which came out last year in August of 2022. Then we have A Million Little Moments that came out in December of 2022. And now we have A Lifetime, a lifetime Kissing You, uh, which releases July 6th. Uh, this says it is a, a lifetime kissing you is a small town. Opposites attract romance with first times, lots of touch, and a love of music. The book deals with past losses of a loved one, anxiety, and panic attacks. And it does say to please read the content warning at the beginning of the book for more information in case you have trigger warnings. It says here, he has a great family, a successful career, and never never struggles to find the company of a man when he wants it. But at 43, his world suddenly feels emptier than it should. And then and this that was Charles. Then we have Brian who says, I've spent my life in love with the woman who married my brother. When they passed, I raised their son, living with the guilt of my feelings. Now at 48, I'm used to being alone somehow these two guys meet and I'm guessing they find love with each other. So I'm excited because this is like a, a first time. So we have uh, Brian who is a straight guy and then he meets Charles and maybe different feelings start to pop up and he wants to explore those feelings. Uh, so yes, I definitely need to get <laughs> uh, to reading this series. I don't know if they can be read as standalones, but if you have been reading this series, book three comes out very soon. Now I have written down, this is another male male romance. Uh, this is gonna be by Ashley James. This is the third book in the Hidden Affair series, also a series that I have written down that I wanna read. The first book is called Brazen Affairs. In fact, I think it might be in my jar of male male romances. We shall see. Uh, the, the next book, or book two, is Storm Clouds and Devastation. 
and then we have Insatiable Hunger. Now, on Goodreads, it doesn't have anything for this book, so this is the picture that I have from Instagram. I don't think the actual cover has been released yet. Is this the cover? I'm not sure. It doesn't say, but this is the picture on Instagram, and this says it's to be released on July 7th. It says what to expect, age gap of 25 plus years. We have a stepdad, a light daddy kink, light impact play, and degradation praise kink. I don't think I've ever read anything like that, so I need to probably get on to the series and see what that's about. The blurb says it was only supposed to be one night. It was never meant to, I was never meant to see him again. One unforgettable night and one nameless face changed everything. He's wealthy, he's powerful, and he's married to my mother. Oh, this is gonna be good. Staying away is impossible and secrets and lies have become second nature. He's crawled under my skin, an energy larger than life, refusing to be ignored as he bends me to his wheel. Ah! Insatiable Hunger is book three in the Hidden Affairs standalone Mel Mel series, so it can be read as a standalone, which I might do because this sounds super hot. This book features a relationship of forbidden nature and has a significant age gap. July 7th. Another Mel Mel romance releasing on July 10th, we have Collided by Becca Steele. This is the second book in the LSU series. Oh, no, I'm sorry. My apologies. This is the prequel to the LSU series, which I have not started, but I actually chose that book a couple months ago. Maybe it was for, I think it was for May. I chose the book and I never got it. I pulled it from my jar and I never got to it. So I'm probably gonna try to get to it this month, but uh, on July 10th, we do have the prequel uh, called Collided coming at us. Um, it says, Collided is a male-male new adult romance with enemies to lover themes. It is a prequel to the LSU series. Each book in the series can be read as a standalone. I always love a good standalone. It says, when my mother told me she was getting married, I had no idea just how much my life would change. Her new husband does his best to make me feel welcome, but his son is a different story. Huxley Granger is rude and aggressive, and from the moment we collide, he makes it clear that he loathes me. Then something happens. An event that alters everything between us. I find myself looking at him in a different way. A way I shouldn't be looking at the person who has been so hostile to me from the beginning. I know I should stay away. I should, but I won't. Another stepbrothers to lover story. You know how much I love those. Back to mystery thrillers. On July 11th, we have The St. Ambrose School for Girls, and this is by Jessica Ward. The, the cover of this book really caught me. I love the hot pink and the black with the white writing. Love it. This says it's a crime reads most anticipated book of the summer. Heathers meets the secret history in this thrilling coming of age novel set in a boarding school where the secrets are devastating and deadly. So, uh, so it looks like this could possibly be a YA mystery thriller, but it seems like it's very dark. So it looks like we have um, sort of an outcast kind of character. When Sarah Taylor arrives at the exclusive school, she's carrying more baggage than just what fits in her suitcase. She knows she's not like the other girls. If the shabby all black nine designer clothes don't give that away, the bottle of lithium hidden in her desk drawer sure does. And then we have uh, the Queen Bee of St. Ambrose is Greta Stanhope. She picks Sarah as a target from day one and the most popular, pow powerful, horrible girl at school is relentless to making sure Sarah knows what the pecking order is. Sarah's roommate, Ellen, uh, a cigarette huffing, a devil may care athlete who takes no bullshit. Also down the hall is Nick Hollis, the devastatingly handsome RA and the object of more than one St. Ambrose student's fantasies. Between the Strots and Nick, 
Sarah hopes she can make it through the semester dealing with not only her schoolwork and a recent bipolar diagnosis, but Greta's increasingly malicious pranks. I hate a bully. I hate a bully in a book, but it sounds really good. You know, I'm a sucker for YA mystery thrillers, so I might be giving this a whirl. Also on July 11th, we have another mystery thriller. This is by May Cobb. I actually haven't been reading May Cobb um, since her first book. I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> Had the lipsticks on the cover. I wasn't too crazy about that book, um, but we have a likable woman coming to us on July 11th. So this one starts out by saying she's back in her affluent hometown for the first time in years and determined to unravel the secrets of her mother's death hidden in the unpublished memoir she left behind, even if it kills her. After her troublemaker mother's mysterious death, Kyra fled her wealthy Texas town and never looked back. Now, decades later, Kyra is invited to an old frenemy's vow renewal party. Though she is reluctant to go, there are things calling her back, like chilled wine and days spent by the pool. Yes, I'd go. Like her sexy childhood crush, Jack. But more importantly, it's the urgent text from her grandmother who says she has something to give Kyra. Something about her mother's death. Something that looks an awful lot like murder. So we won't read any further to that. So we have a woman coming back to her hometown uh, and secrets pop up from the past, I'm guessing. It sounds really good. Uh, so I may give it a, I may give May Cobb another try with this one. Back to Mail Mail Romances, we have another book written by Eden Finley and Saxon James, a great duo. This is Up in Flames. This releases on July 13th. So in this one, we have Sandin telling us about the story. When it's your job as groomsman to tell the groom his wedding isn't happening, the smartest thing to do is get it over and done with and then tell the guests to leave. I never said I was smart. I might accidentally, maybe on purpose, suggest to Remy that the best form of revenge is to have a party anyway. I mean, he's already got catering, a DJ, and guests, so what better time to throw a petty party? My loser high school friend never deserved him anyway. If I'd had the chance, I would have locked Remy down years ago. Only when the party leads to a drunken kiss, going on their honeymoon, and sharing their marital bed, I have to say I'm not entirely sad that their wedding went up in flames. So it looks like we have a uh, best friends to lovers kind of story in this one, but Eden Finley and Saxon James, great duo writer. Also on July 13th, another male male romance, but this one has a little bit of a mystery twist to it. And this is by Nikki James. I've come to really like this author's writing because of the whole male male romance combined with a little thriller mystery. This is everything I didn't know. So this one says it was supposed to be an escape a new life living off the land. It was supposed to be a peaceful community, a family, but it was a lie. Six months after he arrived, Bowie, or Bowie, learned the hard truth about Oasis. There are rules and they are made to be followed. The consequences of disobedience is deadly. Once you're in Oasis, you're never getting out and its cultish founder has eyes everywhere. Okay, so we got a, like a little bit of a culty story here. One year into his survival with a plan to escape slowly simmering to life, Bowie, or Bowie, is faced with a problem. New members have joined the community, among them a man who watches Bowie's eyes. Foster is attractive, older, and so far, as Bowie is concerned, completely unavailable. This doesn't stop Foster from flirting or poking his nose where it doesn't belong. His reckless behavior will get him in trouble, but Foster doesn't seem to realize he's playing with fire. One wrong step and history will repeat itself. Bowie can't allow that to happen and telling Foster the truth about Oasis comes with risk. A fragile alliance forms, a budding romance develops, and more secrets are unveiled. When their plans fall apart, 
Bowie and Foster find themselves in a tangled race to escape Oasis and expose the commune before it's too late. Sounds really good. On July 18th, we get a new book from Samantha Downing. This is a twisted love story. This one says it's a reckless, delicious thriller about a young couple that gives a whole new meaning to the, to the dangers of modern dating. Wes and Ivy are madly in love. They've never felt anything like it. It's the kind of romance people write their stories about. But what kind of story? Because when it's good, it's great. Flowers, grand gestures, deep meaningful conversations where the whole world disappears. When it's bad, it's really bad. Vengeful fights, damaged property, arrest warrants, but their vicious cycle of catastrophic breakups and head over heels reconnections needs to end fast because suddenly Wes and Ivy have a common enemy and she's a detective. Says, can they survive anything, even the tightening net of a police investigation? Because one more breakup might just be their last. I really like the cover. I'm not sure about the synopsis. I may check this one out. Let me know in the comments if this is one that you are anticipating. Uh, it's been a while since I've read a Samantha, a Samantha Downing. The last one I read was um, For Your Own Good, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't read who started it or he started it. I didn't read that. Um, I'm not huge on detective, mystery, thriller type of reads. I mean, sometimes I, I, I'm into it, but sometimes I'm not. Um, I don't know. So let me know in the comments what y'all think about this book. This next book is, this is by Essie Harmon. It's releasing on July 19th. Okay, this cover is giving me like Indiana Jones vibes. <laughs> Uh, this is the first and the last adventure of Kit Sawyer. I haven't read an Essie Harmon in a while, and I was kind of iffy about this one when I came across it because, I don't know, I'm not a huge, like, exploration. I'm actually not a big uh, Indiana Jones fan, and don't come at me, but <laughs> I was never really a big fan of it. But anyway, it says, in the archaeology community, Christopher Kit Sawyer's family is a legacy. And while he may be a historian, not a treasure hunter, he thinks he does a pretty good job of living up the Sawyer name. He's a book smart research fanatic and does his best work at his tidy desk. No fedora and whip for him, if you please. A nice cup of coffee and a comfy chair will do. But decoding an ancient relic soon gives him more adventure than he bargained for. Unwittingly, he unleashes a force he doesn't know how to control, and now he has to reunite the relic with a powerful Aztec god. The trouble with that, Kit doesn't know where to find the whatever temple. No one does, in fact. Finding it could be a discovery for the ages. This is where uh, the synopsis kind of lost me when I was reading reading through it, because I'm, I'm all about like a good treasure hunt, uh, I, I love the, the National Treasure movies, but I'm not sure about the whole Aztec God thing and whatever temple. I'm not sure. So this is another one. I don't know if I'm like, it, it's, it kind of intrigues me, but I'm not sure if it's something I want to pick up. So again, let me know in the comments if this is one that's on y'all radar uh, and if y'all are going to check it out. It, what, what also kind of got me writing it down, putting it on the list, is I do believe it's a stepbrothers to lo lovers kind of story. Um, because his former stepbrother, Ethan, comes into the it comes into the picture. It says he horns in on the expedition. An experienced archaeologist, he's only coming along at their grandfather's request, which annoys Kit to no end, but he knows Ethan is just the right person to get them through the jungle safely. So yeah, that's what made me like, ooh, I love a good stepbrothers to lovers kind of story, and these guys are ex stepbrothers. Uh, so I'm kind of anxious to see like how their story plays out, and will this whole archaeologist kind of thing intrigue me? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Another anticipated read for me uh, coming on July 25th. This is Everyone Here Is Lying by Sherry Lapina. Super excited to be getting uh, a book by this author. It's been a while since I believe she's come out with anything. Um, the last book I have is 
the end of her. Um, and it's been a while, I know, since I've read that book. So I'm anxious to see what this one's going to be about. It says, another thrilling domestic suspense. Welcome to Stanhope, a safe neighborhood, a place for families. William Wooler is a family man on the surface, but he's been having an affair, an affair that ended horribly this afternoon at a motel up the road. So when he returns to his house, devastated and angry, to find his difficult nine-year-old daughter, Avery, unexpectedly home from school, William loses his temper. Hours later, Avery's family declares her missing. Suddenly, Stan Hope doesn't feel so safe. And William isn't the only one on his street who's hiding a lie. As witnesses come forward with information that may or may not be true, Avery's neighborhood becomes increasingly unhinged. Who took Avery Wooler? Nothing will prepare you for the truth. I'm ready for it. Okay, I wrote this one down just because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this cozy mystery series. It's been a while since I picked up a cozy mystery. Like it, it had, it was, a, there was a time when that's all I read. Um, and then I just kind of advanced from there. But every now and then I want, I want a cozy mystery. And this series, this is the Booktown Mystery Series. And this is by Lorna Barrett. We have the 17th book coming out on July 25th. Yes, July 25th. This is a questionable character. I, I think there's like maybe two books before this one that I still have not read. I'm not necessarily right in this moment ready to read a cozy mystery, but I wanted to put it on the list. One, to remind me about it and remind myself that uh, maybe you want to go back and read some cozy mystery or at least like check up and see what's happening in Booktown because it was one of my absolute favorite cozy mysteries, thrillers, a cozy mystery series uh, to read. So, like I said, this is number 17. So we have a lot of history with uh, with our characters. So we have Trisha Miles, who is, um, she's our main character. Uh, her and her sister, Angelica, moved to this little small town and they both opened up little businesses. Trisha has a bookstore and Angelica, Angelica at this point is like mayor of the town. I, I mean, I could be exaggerating, but I know she's up there in the town. She's like really took it over. She also, she's also a very good cook. So she has um, a restaurant, maybe one or two restaurants. I don't remember. But I enjoy the, the, the sisterly bond between these two characters in the stories. I love um, reading their, their little connections while Angelica is cooking, while she's throwing things together. They also have, if you get the books, they also have recipes in the books. Um, so it's just a really fun, cute little series. If, if you're into cozy mysteries, I highly recommend it. So this one says, it's a busy summer in Booktown. Contractor Jim Stark is in great demand. He's overseeing a number of projects, including Angelica Miles' newly constructed building on Main Street, finishing up the new brew pub, and gutting a stone mansion off Main Street that Angelica bought to be the world headquarters for... Nigella Reseda Associates. There's a little background with Angelica too that has to do with this uh, Nigella Reseda Associates as well. So you really do need to read all the books in order. It also says it'll house office, office squares where her marketing staff and the rest of the NR Associates clerical personnel will work. Trisha Miles and, Angel and Angelica arrive at the mansion before their workday to see how the construction is going. They find the place unlocked and Stark's right-hand man, Sanjay Arya, dead, bludgeoned to death. The loss of the contractor's top man threatens all the projects in the works, which would effectively, effectively ruin the expensive marketing plan that the Chamber of Commerce has been working on. Is Jim a suspect? Once again, Trisha finds herself in the middle of a murder investigation, but can she find the killer before he or she has the chance to bring the hammer down? So, so yeah, uh, once again, you really do have to read the, the entirety of the series to really get a good feel about what it's about, who Trisha is, who Angelica is. In the, in the first couple books, they kind of start out like not 
a great relationship between the two sisters um, but they really grow uh, with each other and it's 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 a beautiful story between Angelica and Trisha I really enjoy them two together uh, anyway I just want to throw it in there it comes out July 25th okay last but certainly not least this is another male male romance this is it's more on the dark side of Melmo romances. I've really grown, grown to, to like Nyla Kay's writing after reading for the fans. Um, now this is book four or volume four in her uh, Alabaster Penitentiary series. Um, this is the picture that is on Instagram. So it says July 28th, cover coming soon. This is the last picture she posted. So. I don't know what the true cover is going to be, but I really want to go back and read this series because it sounds deep and dark and sexy as all get out. There's not much of a blurb. It says Fragments is a dark male-male romance set in the world of Alabaster Penitentiary. While it contains a new couple with their own happily ever after. It is recommended to read the rest of the series first to get the full effect of the aisle. Content warnings will be listed on my website. Um, so yeah, if you want to go to Nyla Kay's website, she'll have those listed. It does say, Frenemies to Lovers, Toxic AF, Pining and Unrequited Love, A Virgin Plus a Sex Addict, Cheating, Lots of Kinks, gut stabbing pain drama suspense betrayal lust and emotional damage all culminating in the perfect storm so <laughs> this just sounds really really deep and dark and i'm ready for it so i really want to go back to the beginning and uh read this series so there you have it that comes out july 28th and that's it those are all the books i have written down that have like just caught my eye uh, that are releasing in the month of July. Of course, I'm sure there are more out there that I am missing. So let me know in the comments, what are you looking forward to in July? Any books coming out, whatever they may be, whatever genre they may be, let me know in the comments. I uh, hope you all have a great Pride Month. And just remember, just because Pride Month is over with, that does not mean that you have to stop celebrating you and who you are. It is just it was just an extra month to make it extra special. Uh, but anyway, um, as always, I love you. Hugs from me all around. And I'll see y'all very, very soon in a new video. Bye, y'all.